Okay, we are going to paint the nativity scene here. Brushes um, will go in a cup of water and you're gonna have a paint rag or paper towels or something. Every time you take that brush out of the water, dry it off, okay? All right, let's get started on our nativity scene. So I'm gonna take my big brush out first and I'm gonna dry it off. And I'm just gonna paint the whole background black, okay? Now, when I'm painting the background, um, when I get really close to, for instance, uh, the baby Jesus or the manger or the little grass down here or the hay um, in the manger or um, even the, um, the star here, when I get really close to those areas, if I get nervous about running into them too much, I can switch to my medium brush, okay? The medium brush is the smaller of the two flat brushes. So if you ever feel like, you know, you're, you're just afraid you're going to run into something, you can always switch to that brush. But I do want to make sure you go all the way to those pencil marks, especially somewhere like the hay and the manger. Um, people are always nervous about running into that. You want the hay later on to go on top of the background so it was a little more natural. So don't worry about trying to uh, protect those pencil marks, okay? So I'm gonna uh, dry my big brush off and I'm just gonna start painting my background. Use nice, long, soft brush strokes here. Just so you know, I'm a really fast painter. And I say that because I don't want you to look up here in a second and say, oh my gosh, she is almost done with her black and I've, I'm just getting started, okay? I don't want you worried about that. Um, you are going to paint at your speed here. That is the beauty of having a video, okay? Now, if I'm teaching a class, obviously, I am going to slow down and wait for people. And, um, you know, if I can see people are still working or whatever, I will absolutely slow down and wait for them. But something like this, uh, I, I try to do a bunch of videos in one day. So uh, what I'll do is just paint at my regular speed on something like this. And whenever you feel like you need to pause, you can pause and catch up, okay? So this background, uh, when you're painting with black, you'll notice once you get going on this, like, you know, when it starts to dry later on, you'll notice there will be little pockets of white canvas poking through. There's not anything you're doing wrong. It's just the way the paint dries, okay? When that black paint dries against the, um, the white canvas, it just, it's gonna leave some little pockets later on. You'll need to go back in and go back over those just to make sure, you know, you're covering um, all the black. But, so after you're done with the black in a few minutes, uh, let it dry for two or three minutes. And then anywhere you see um, some really noticeable uh, white canvas poking through, you can go ahead and go back over those sections, okay? Don't worry if you run into your pencil marks. Remember, you're going to cover those up later on anyway, so it does not matter. My drafting table's falling here, so I had to readjust. We get nice, long, soft paint strokes. We'll make sure we're getting nice coverage here. And doing those long, soft paint strokes is really the best thing we can do to get good coverage. Sorry, my easel's pretty noisy here. There's something loose on the top of it, and I never remember it until I'm teaching and the noise is super annoying. Notice I have really, really run into my star there. That's fine. No worries on that. Remember on that hay in the manger, just go right on up into that. It doesn't matter. Um, when you're done with this, which is not going to be for a while, don't try to rush it, but when you're done for, with this part, I want you to go rinse your brushes and get clean water. 
We'll need to take about 10 minutes to let this dry. We do want to make sure that we take plenty of time to let it dry because we come back in and start doing the other sections. We don't want our black paint to mix in with all of our other colors, okay? So when this, uh, when you finish this, let it dry for two or three minutes so that you can see any areas you might need to touch up. And then after you do that, and you definitely, just so you know, you definitely will have areas you need to touch up. I have never painted a canvas black that I did not have to go back in and touch it up. Even if I'm really, really trying hard to make sure that I'm getting really great coverage on there. Okay, my star is probably way smaller than your stars at this point, just because I have really run into that thing. But again, I have never had a canvas that I painted black that I did not have to go back in and touch up some of the black after it dried for two or three minutes. So let it dry for two or three minutes. When you're done with the black, which I know you're not yet, take your time. But when you're done with that black, let it dry for two or three minutes. Any areas you need to touch up, go ahead and do that. This black is going to take you longer than anything else, okay? Because we're literally covering, you know, 90% of our canvas with this black paint. So it is going to take you a good long while. Do not worry about that at all. When I'm done here, um, I'm going to go and uh, I need to go and grab a little more paint because I've been painting here for six or seven hours and I'm almost out of paint. So um, I want you um, before we move on to the next section, I'll have you pause. Um, I'm going to probably go dry mine in a few minutes. Um, and then you can pause till you're finished with your black, okay? When you're done with your black, I want you to go rinse those brushes and get clean water. It's very important that you get clean water uh, because we do not want to get this black paint in our other colors in a few minutes, okay? So it's very important that you rinse those brushes and get clean water when you're done. Take your time on that. Remember, once it, dry, uh, once it dries two or three minutes, you'll be able to see any little areas you need to come in and clean up on that black. Like I said, not anything that you're doing wrong, just the way the black paint dries. So good time now to pause and um, just come in uh, after uh, two or three minutes, just come back in, uh, cover up any areas you need to on that black. And then we're gonna give it about 10 minutes to dry, okay? Okay, so if you're back, I'm assuming that your black paint is probably dry or close to it. Um, just, uh, just so you know, whenever I'm teaching these classes, Sometimes I do them a little different than they are in the instructions. So if you're following along in the instructions, you're probably noticing some stuff that's different already. Um, the reason I do that is because if I'm able to show you something, uh, sometimes it, there's an easier way to do it than what I tell, how I tell you to do it when I'm writing the instructions. So just know if I'm doing something a little different here, it's not because I've lost my way, although sometimes that does happen. Um, it's just because, like I said, it's just a little easier sometimes for me to show you how to do something than it is to tell you, okay? So I'm going to start using, or I'm going to start out with my big brush here. I'm going to pick up my big brush. I'm going to pick up some of that metallic gold color. And we're going to use a lot of metallics in this painting. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, but I'm going to pick up my big brush and I'm going to do some metallic gold down here at the bottom, okay? Now, when I sketched mine, I did sketch mine a little closer to the bottom than yours is, so you'll be able to use a little more metallic gold down there, which I'm jealous about, but I'm going to pick up some metallic gold with my big brush. Um, notice this metallic gold. This metallic gold is really thin, just so you know, so a lot of times people think they need to put more on. You don't. You actually want to see some of that black underneath it, um, in order to make it really uh, shimmery and make it really pop, it's got to have something to contrast with, and the black is perfect for that, okay? So I'm going to take my meat and my big brush, sorry, put some gold on there, and then look, I'm going to come in just really, really softly down here. Notice I can still see 
some of the black though. Okay, I'm just going really, really soft down there. Um, our star is kind of uh, giving us a little bit of a glow down there at the bottom, okay? So again, just really, really soft there. And that was my big brush. You just do a little bit. You can always add more later. You probably won't need to, um, but you just know you can always add more later. A little bit of metallic goes a long way. Uh, the metallics look really cool when they go on, but I'm telling you, when they really pop is after they dry. They're just really shimmery, especially against this black. It's going to be gorgeous. So the next thing we're going to do, go ahead and put your medium brush back, or your big brush, sorry, back into the water. Take your medium brush out. We're going to do the little um, legs of our manger. So I want you to take that medium brush and let's mix uh, a nice big scoop of brown and then a teeny tiny little scoop of black. When I say a teeny tiny little scoop, just do this. Just take your medium brush and just put the corner of it in that black. So big scoop of white, tiny little scoop of black, or sorry, big scoop of brown, tiny little scoop of black, mix those together. These are really thin colors, so this is gonna be streaky. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna go back over it in a few minutes, but I'm gonna paint this and that. And like I said, it's really streaky, but do not worry about that. In a few minutes, we're gonna go back over that anyway. So again, nice big scoop of brown, little scoop of black. Just kind of dip the corner of your brush in that black, that'll be plenty. It is a really, really thin color, but do not worry. We're gonna come back in in just a few minutes and put on another coat. It's not gonna be that color, but we're gonna do another coat on it. This is just a base coat, kind of a primer. Okay, we are going to mix a color now and we're going to start building some hay here, okay? So take your medium brush again, rinse it off, dry it off. Let's pick up a nice big scoop of white. So a nice big scoop of white and two nice big scoops of the kind of honey mustard color. Um, don't use the gold and copper yet. Make sure when you're picking up colors, you're not getting the gold or copper. So one scoop of the white color and two scoops of the kind of honey mustard color. Mix those two together or mix those two colors together. Uh, wipe your brush off a little bit so you don't have too much paint on your brush. You can even rinse it and dry it if you want to. I just don't want you to have too much paint on your brush. It's really hard to paint if you've got too much paint. We're gonna start building our hay um, that's coming out of our manger. We're gonna start in the center and kind of work our way out at an angle, okay? Um, there's two different ways you can use that medium brush. You can use it this way, the full way. My brush is really old, um, but you just use it the full way like this, or you can use it on the side like this and get a thinner stroke. Now again, my brush is really old. Um, and it's really splayed out on the end, as you can see there, but I love this brush. Um, but again, see the side of it there, you can use it the big way like that or the small way like that. We're gonna use the small way like that. And we're gonna brush out this way, okay? So I'm gonna pick up some of that white and mustard color. I'm gonna start right here and watch as I do this. I'm just letting it fade out onto the black, okay? I'm letting, oops. A bit picked up a little bit of my color for the uh, manger there, but that's totally fine. I'm going to use some brown in a few minutes anyway, so bonus for me. All right, so I'm just kind of going out this way. Notice I'm going over the black some, okay, and you can still see some of the black showing through underneath it. That's totally fine. We're going to do a lot of layers on our manger here on the hay on the manger, we're gonna do a lot of layers there um, just because we want to build some depth, okay? And again, I ran into my colors from my, um, my little manger right here, totally fine, that's perfect. And I'm gonna go up and out, up and out. And then when you get down here, obviously you're going a little straighter, but notice those little lines are curved. I'm gonna do some of that hay down here that's kind of facing upwards, like, you know, kind of going upwards here. We're gonna do some of that the same way we just did the hay in the manger. 
where we're using the side of the medium brush. This time we're gonna go up and out, whereas before we went out and down. So our hay is forming a bed here, obviously. That's why we're going up and out, up and out and down. Okay, so I'm gonna move down here. And by the way, if I ever um, get ahead of you, keep in mind, this is a video. All you have to do is pause. So I'm gonna use the side of my brush again, and I'm just gonna come down here and just, uh, and by the way, you don't have to stick with exactly the little uh, hay that we drew for you. Notice I'm mixing in with some of this, um, the brown, that's perfect. We're gonna add some brown in a minute anyway. I went real heavy on that brown, as you can see when I did the manger. So I'm going up and out like this. Notice how it just kind of fades off into my black. I had a little black in mine too, because my black wasn't totally dry. Um, you'll notice on here, it doesn't really matter um, with those colors because we're gonna build so much depth down there anyway, it's not gonna matter. I did lose my gold, I wanna add some of that back in here. But we're gonna build lots of depth down here with different colors on our manger, with different colors on that little grass um, or hay coming up at the bottom. So just know that uh, when we start doing that, um, when we start adding those other colors in, it's gonna look like this anyway. So this was with the white and mustard color, that white and mustard mixture. If you need to mix more of it, it's two scoops of white, one scoop of that kind of honey mustard color. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown. Make sure you're picking up brown and not the um, make sure you pick up brown and not um, the copper color. They're real close. You pick up a little bit of brown. Once again, I'm going to hold my brush like this and not that. Pick up a little bit of brown, not too much. I'm going to come in like this, add some brown. Notice that the uh, honey mustard and white mixture, though, those are still the colors that are most prominent there. And I'll come in and add some of that down here, too. Just building depth. Okay, this is just the beginning of our depth. Just starting to build some depth down here. Don't worry, all these colors are gonna make sense later on. Just building some depth. Okay, we are going to mix uh, just a real light gray color for um, the first coat on baby Jesus' blanket here or his swaddling clothes. Um, take your medium brush out Mix a nice big scoop of white and a little tiny scoop of black. So medium brush, nice big scoop of white, little tiny scoop of black. And let's just paint this area right in here. Now we are in a couple minutes gonna come back in and add some white to that. This is just a first coat, just a nice thin coat there. Uh, I know mine looks white um, with this light. I've got a ring light here. And sometimes when I do like a really light gray, it does make it look way white, so apologize about that. But it, just trust me, it's gray. And then rinse that brush off and dry it. So medium brush, we're gonna mix just a white and black color, we're making gray. And like I said, I know mine looks white, but it's not. Let me slide just through here so I can show you. So if you, if you see that, well, it still looks white, doesn't it? Um, but this is actually gray. There we go. You can see it a little better now. See that gray on there? So that is my gray. So take a look. That is my gray for my um, swaddling clothes there. And we'll come in and blend a little bit of white into that in a few minutes. So now I'm going to mix the skin tone for baby Jesus, okay? So I'm going to take my medium brush. And I'm just gonna mix one scoop of white and one scoop of brown. Make sure you're using the brown, not the copper. So a scoop of white, scoop of brown with your medium brush. If you want it lighter, add more white, darker, add more brown. So that I mixed it with my medium brush. I'm gonna switch to my small brush to paint it because it's so small, the head is so small. Whenever you're using a small brush and you're doing little detail work, if you hold your brush like this, like you would a pen or a pencil, it's a lot easier to control, okay? So again, I mixed one scoop of white, one scoop of brown. 
with my medium brush, that medium brush back into the water. So I'm gonna to switch to my small brush to paint the head with. And if you kind of brace your hand against the canvas, it's a lot easier to do that, okay? So again, just kind of brace your hand against the canvas and use your small brush and paint the head here. I'm gonna use my finger to add a tiny bit of white to my little blanket here. So I'm gonna take my finger, put a little bit of white paint on my finger, and then come in here like this, just real soft and kind of blend that in, just so there's some depth to that, okay? Because right now it's just really flat and um, gray. And I just wanna add some depth to it so it looks like it's kind of folded over, okay? And I'm gonna bring it closer here so you can see that better because again, it's hard to see there but I have to hold it down like this so you can see it, but see how that um, uh, white is kind of blended into the gray there so that it gives it uh, a little bit of depth, makes it like it's folded over. So I'm holding this real close to the screen now, if you can see that, I blended a little white in with my finger. So I'm gonna use my medium brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint, um, no matter how little white paint you picked up, it's too much. So dab it off on your paper a little bit so you don't have too much, or on your plate a little bit. And then I'm going to come in like this, add a little bit of white here. And again, it's going to be kind of stark. Don't worry about that. We're going to come back over in a minute with some other colors. And then I'll come in down here, add a little more. Again, it's going to be kind of stark right now. Don't worry about that. Just want to use a tiny bit though. Add a little bit of this white down here, a little bit of the white in the manger. And then we're gonna add another layer. It looks really funny right now, I know. And then we're gonna add another layer with that original color we used, which was that white and kind of mustard color, okay? So the white and the kind of honey mustard or gray coupon color. And a little more of that, keep in mind. The more layers we do here, the more depth we get. So after we do the white, again, the white on the manger and down here, I'm gonna take that medium brush again. I'm gonna come right on top of this and do a little bit of this color in here. You can still see some of my brown. Do that there. I'm also gonna do it down here. Just real soft, just barely touch your canvas here. And then we're gonna leave that alone for a few minutes. I'm gonna come back and add some more depth to it in a few minutes, okay? We're gonna leave it alone for right now. And when you're done with that, go ahead and rinse that um, medium brush off and dry it. Again, we are gonna come back in a few minutes. We're actually gonna use our small brush in a few minutes to really control how much paint we're using for our manger or for the hay in our manger and also for our little hay down at the bottom here. We're gonna use some of that metallic gold in just a second to give us a nice little sunburst pattern coming out from our star, okay? We're not painting the star just yet. We're just painting the little sunburst pattern that comes out from the star. So go ahead and finish up on your hay and the little hay down at the bottom. And take that medium brush, rinse it off, dry it off. Make sure you dry it off really well because we're about to use the metallic gold and the metallics are really, really thin colors. So if they get any white in them, they, it makes them even more thin and it just doesn't look as good, okay? So make sure that we really, um, you really dry that medium brush off before we start playing around with this. I'm gonna pick up some gold with my medium brush. Don't have a ton on your brush, you know, just pick up some gold there. Now, don't worry if you run into your star here, you're going to, it's fine. So we wanna do kind of a sunburst pattern coming out from our star here, okay? So take a look. I'm gonna start in the center and just watch as I do one side of it, okay? I'm gonna come in the center and do this just real soft, okay? Really soft, barely touch your canvas. Notice how, again, it's just like a little sunburst pattern here. Look how nice that metallic gold is. Isn't that a cool color? I mean, that metallic gold just really sparkles. Um, when it dries, it's not gonna be quite this stark, 
Uh, but do make sure you're not using too, too much paint on your brush here. Um, but when it dries, it won't be quite this stark because that black paint is just a really strong color. And when you start, uh, when it starts to dry in a few minutes, it will fade just a little bit. Okay. So just a little starburst pattern here kind of coming out. Whoops. I went way too far there. I'm going to need to cover that up with black. So don't go quite as far as I did there. I need to kind of back some of that out with some black here. Um, but like I said, don't have too, too much paint on your brush when you're doing this. It's just a little easier to control when you don't have too much paint on it. So that gold just coming out from the center, just coming out from the center here and uh, it's in a kind of a starburst pattern there. And you just go a little soft with it. You don't want a ton of gold on there. Um, you can still see some of the black through the gold. That's perfect. You want to, that's perfectly fine. We're going to mix a color in just a second for the star. Now this won't be the final color for the star. Um, this is actually just a base coat for our star. So don't get concerned. It's gonna be kind of a blah color right now. But when you're done with that starburst, I want you to take your medium brush, rinse it off, dry it off. And we are going to mix a scoop of white. Actually, we can mix two scoops of white and one scoop of the metallic gold, okay? So two scoops of white, one scoop of that metallic gold. We're mixing that with our medium brush. So two white, one metallic gold, mix it with your medium brush. and then switch to your small brush to paint the star, okay? Uh, now, I will tell you the easiest way to paint the star is going to be to lay the ca your canvas flat. So if you have an easel, um, I would take it off the easel at this point, um, but lay the canvas flat, hold your brush like a pen or pencil like this, and then brace your hand on the canvas, okay? So again, hold your brush like a pen or pencil like this, um, lay your canvas flat and brace your hand on the canvas. That's the easiest way to do this. You're going to use your small brush, come in like this, and paint your star. Now, do not worry if your star is not perfect. It's not going to be. That's totally fine. But again, if you brace your hand on your canvas, it's hard to do that when I'm uh, painting on the easel, so I'm not going to be able to do that a whole lot here, um, but that's just to show you how to do it. Just helps you stay in the lines a little better. And uh, again, I know my star is a lot smaller than yours, but that's okay. I'm not going to go in at this point and make it a lot bigger. I'm going to make it a little longer because I keep screwing that up. Take your time on this, especially take your time if you're using your brush like a pen or a pencil, okay? If you're doing that and trying to get those really nice lines, don't screw it up by rushing through that, okay? So, you know, don't work at odds with yourself if you're trying to hold it like a pen or a pencil in order to get better lines. Keep in mind, if you run outside the lines or whatever, you could always go back in later with black or you know, whatever color you need to, to cover this up. You have enough paint to paint this thing three times over, okay? Now, that does not mean you need to paint this thing three times over. I'm just saying that because uh, if you mess anything up, you have plenty of paint to fix it, okay? And speaking of messing anything up, you're going to think you've messed stuff up a lot of times when you haven't. And that's just because um, whenever you look at your painting, all you really see is either the last thing you did 
or anything you did that you think you might have messed up, okay? That's just the only thing people see when they're looking at these paintings. Again, it's just either the last thing you did. Sorry, I'm trying to get that glare off of there a little bit. Um, either the last thing you did or whatever you think you might have messed up, okay? So in a few minutes after we're done, I'm going to have you back up and squint and take a look. That just gives you a better idea of what your canvas actually looks like. When you're sitting right on top of it and you're staring at it, it's never going to look exactly right um, because you're not seeing the whole thing. You're just seeing little pieces of it. But when you back up and you squint, that's when you can see the whole painting, okay? That's when you can see it um, as a whole, not as little fragmented pieces. Another good way is to take a picture of your painting. That also will help you uh, kind of see the painting um, more like it's going to look to you tomorrow. If you have, um, uh, if you have your camera around, just take a picture, take a quick picture of it, look at the picture, and you'll be surprised how different the picture looks than your actual painting does. Because again, it's helping you to see the painting as a whole and not as little pieces. And if you need to pause for a few minutes to um, finish up that star, please do so. I don't want you to feel rushed on that. Uh, like I said, though, if you will lay it flat, you'll lay that canvas flat, embrace your hand against the canvas, use your brush like a pen or a pencil, it does make it a lot easier. So as I'm looking at the hay in my manger, I need a little bit more brown. So I need a little bit more brown in my manger. So I'm gonna add just a few streaks of brown with my small brush in the manger and then also in the little hay down at the bottom here. So I'm gonna take my small brush, pick up a little brown like this. I'm gonna come in like so. Notice I'm not putting a whole lot, just a little bit of this brown. Notice how it's kind of breaking up like my ink pen's running out of ink. That's perfect. I can also add some of this just regular mustard color, not the mustard and white mixture, but just some of the regular mustard color. I can add some of that. Well, this is one of those times you need to kind of stand up and back up from it and squint when you look at your manger to figure out if you've got the colors that you want in there or your, your hay in the manger. So again, I added some brown with my small brush, and then I added some of that straight kind of honey mustard color. And I'll do the same thing down here. Do the same thing down here. Like I said, I'm using my small brush this time. That will just help me control a little better how much paint I'm putting on. Some of your brown first. Highlighting with some of the honey mustard color. I also want to highlight my um, the manger, the little legs of the manger. You know, earlier we did that with a deep brown color. I'm going to highlight that now with just straight brown. And I'll just use my brush. Sorry, the hiccups. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm just going to use my brush like I would a pen or a pencil. Brace my hand. I'm just going to add just a little bit of brown wherever I can see that deep brown color. I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown to that, um, to the manger, you know, to the little X on the manger. Just add that in there, just so it kind of pops a little more. And again, this is a good time to back up and kind of squint, take a look at this, um, make sure, you know, you got some good colors down here, um, that you've got some depth in your hay. We are gonna be adding some metallic gold in a few minutes, so that's gonna really make a big difference. And speaking of metallic gold, we're also going to add a little bit of metallic gold in a few minutes to our star. Before we do that though, we wanna do a little tiny bit of outlining. So after you do your hay and you've gone over 
the little um, legs of your manger with that um, brown paint, just straight brown. Take out your small brush again, rinse it off, dry it off. But when you rinse it off and dry it off um, before you start outlining, it kind of helps you to reshape that brush. Just kind of take your finger here and just swirl it around like that, kind of reshape it so it's pointier. We're gonna do just a little bit of outlining. And this is really haphazard outlining. You don't need to be exactly on the line or anything. So just kind of haphazard outlining here. Um, we're going to do a tiny bit of outlining with black around uh, the little legs like this of your manger. So I'm on the little legs like that, black paint. I'm also going to do just a little bit of outlining kind of around um, the swaddling clothes here. Notice that I'm not exactly on the line. I don't want to be perfect on that. I want it to be more abstract. And I like to use the handle of my brush, my small brush to do this, just like a little dot on the little X. So it looks almost like a little nail um, in the manger, kind of holding those little legs together, okay? So um, again, I just use the handle of my brush. Take a look right here. I just use the handle of my brush and added a little black dot right there. Remember, if you ever need to pause when you're watching these videos, please, please do so. Um, I don't ever want you to feel rushed, um, but the whole idea of these videos is that you can pause them. That way you can take your time. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add some metallic gold Using my small brush, I'm going to add some metallic gold right in here to my manger. Now that metallic gold, you're going to be tempted to use a ton of it. It is really, really cool color, um, but you don't need to overdo it. I know it's hard to see on my picture here. On my, I mean, on this uh, with the lighting in here. I apologize. It's uh, about two in the morning, so the lighting in here, I don't have any natural light going on. I've just got my ring light there. Um, so I know it's kind of hard to see that, but I'm gonna bring it a little closer for you here. So notice that metallic gold on there. Well, you can't really see it there, there you go. So notice that metallic gold on there. That really, really makes that hay pop. So I'm gonna do some on my hay in my manger. And then I'll also do some kind of down at the bottom where that hay is just sticking up going towards the manger I'm using my small brush, the gold metallic paint. And like I said, don't add too much. You got to have something for the gold to contrast with or it's not going to make as big an impact. OK, so you got to have something for that to contrast with. A lot of times people just put so much gold. When I say people, I mean myself. Um, sometimes people put so much gold in there uh, that you know they don't have anything to contrast with anymore, and so it doesn't it doesn't show up as well. It does, it's not as shimmery as it should be. And the last thing I'm going to do is add a layer of metallic gold to my star. Now, of course, I have the gold in the background around the star, but you're still going to be able to tell the difference between the gold and the star and the gold um, kind of glow that's in a starburst pattern coming out from the star. You still will be able to tell a difference. You've got that lighter color underneath the star itself, and then you've got obviously the darker color, the black underneath the starburst pattern. So you are gonna be able to tell a difference between the two, even though they're both gonna be metallic gold, you will be able to tell a difference. So I'm gonna use my small brush here. And again, the, the, if you can brace your hand, I guess the canvas, you can lay it flat and brace your hand like this. It works so much better. But notice how it's still metallic gold, but because it's on that lighter background, 
I can still tell a difference between that color and the starburst, but when it dries, it is still going to be so shimmery. It's going to be really nice. But again, I can still see some of the light color underneath. That's perfect. I want to. Using my small brush. I like to take my finger and kind of go around the center like this. Almost like I'm making a little circle there in the center. Do that after you've got the whole thing painted. I was just kind of showing you what it would look like. Yeah, you can wait till you got the whole thing painted there, the whole star here painted before you do that. And I'll show you again in a second what I was doing. And again, if you hold the brush like a pen or pencil, really does help you to get those lines better. And if you're able to brace your hand on the canvas, even better. Remember, I know this is the same color we used on the Starburst, but you're going to be able to tell a big difference. Um, oh, let's see, I'm going to bring this a little closer. So take a look at mine. It's so hard to see with that light. I apologize. But look, take a look at mine. Um, so the gold, you can't really see it like this, like you're seeing it when it's on my easel. But um, when you see it like this, you can see it a lot better. Take a look at that gold right there. That gold really, really pops. It's going to be very, very shimmery, but it's going to be different from the outside, which is perfect. So take a look one more time. I'm going to put it back on my easel. It's kind of hard to see these particular colors, um, you know, on this easel. And I apologize for that. Like I said, it's really late at night and I don't have any natural light coming in. Might have to redo this video at some point so you can see a little better, but that's why I brought it up a little closer for you. But again, I like to kind of use my finger in this center part like this to do almost like a little circle in the center there. And I'll show you that close up in a minute too. I know I kept saying metallic copper earlier too. We've got two different um, nativity scenes and one of them we use metallic copper and I always get them confused. So this one actually doesn't have any metallic copper in it. So when I said that earlier, if you were thinking you were missing a color, you're not. I've just got an extra color here. This one actually doesn't um, have or need any metallic copper in it. I'm going to add a little more metallic gold down at the bottom here, kind of down in this area. I want to add a little bit more. Um, remember where we did that gold kind of in the very beginning earlier? I want to add a little more of that gold down here just because it's such a nice contrast to that black. I really do like having a good bit of that gold down here. Again, such a nice contrast to that black. If you ever um, get in a situation like I'm in right now where, um, you know, my paint is not blending very well, I just need to let that dry for a few minutes. I need to let that dry for a few minutes and then I can go back over it. Either that or I can kind of spread it out a little bit with my fingers like this. I love painting with my fingers because um, there's just so much you can do with your fingers that you can't do with a brush. So um, whenever I teach, I love painting with my fingers. Okay, so I'm going to show you this close up again, just so you can see um, the star, kind of some things I did to the star. I did that little, um, a, a little circle in the center of the star, which really looks really cool. Um, and I want you to see again, the gold on here that you really can't see when it is on this easel. All right, so take a look. Now that's what it looks like when it's on, on the easel. But if you look like this, 
you can see that little circle I've got in the center of my star. And you also see that little starburst pattern is a different color than my star, but that they're both very, very shimmery, um, very shiny there, okay? Uh, but again, if you'll look, you'll see the starburst pattern and the star are different um, shades of metallic gold, but they both still have that really nice metallic gold shimmer. Oh my gosh, this easel is so noisy. All right, and when you are done with that, you are done with your painting. Um, down here, if you feel like you need to go back in and add anything, like for instance, I probably went a little heavy with the gold down there on that last go round. So I might come and add some brown or something down here. Um, remember though, back up from it, take a look at it before you do that. Back up, um, squint, take a look at it. It'll just kind of help you to figure out either that or take a picture of it. It'll just kind of help you to figure out if what you're seeing is accurate or if you need to just wait till tomorrow, look at it again, and then make some decisions, okay? Um, when you look at it after you've been staring at it for a couple of hours here, then all you're gonna see is little issues you think you have, okay? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please like, or not like, but please follow us on YouTube. Just subscribe for our YouTube channel. We're gonna be adding a lot more videos. We're gonna be adding some free tutorials on things like um, blending sunsets, um, blending uh, water, if you're doing an ocean scene or a beach scene, um, making surf uh, so that it comes up on the sand. So we're gonna be adding a lot of videos in the next week or so. So please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can see those free videos. We love that people are really getting into painting um, during COVID. We love that people are, are enjoying these to-go kits. So we want to uh, help you guys as much as possible to, um, to learn some new techniques and things like that. So these videos are free on our YouTube channel. So just subscribe to that if you want to see more videos, okay? Well, thank you guys so much. If you have any questions or anything, you can always shoot us a message on Facebook or go to our Sips and Strokes page and uh, just choose Sandy Springs from the drop down menu. And you can send us um, a note and ask us any questions about our paintings. If you need some help, um, please let me know. I'm always happy to help you, okay? All right, well, thank you guys so much and happy painting. We hope we see you again.